Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at five services that you can disable on your new Windows PC to hopefully make things a little bit more snappy, make it more responsive, and also, more importantly, to stop wasting SSD write and read cycles to extend the life of your expensive SSDs and NVMe drives. Now, for some of you watching this, if you followed our previous tutorials, a lot of these things will be disabled anyway. But I think, as always, there's always new people joining the channel and also people that just don't really understand what goes on in the background of Windows and what services you actually need and which ones you can safely stop or even remove altogether. So let's head over to the computer and take a closer look. So the first one we're going to take a look at is a very easy one. So this is Windows Update Delivery Optimization. So what this does is actually updates Windows via the internet and also from local PCs on your network. But conversely, it also uses your PC as something of a hub for other external devices to get updates from your system. Now, it's a pretty much a waste of bandwidth and also it is taking up CPU resources. So let's go ahead and disable it. So in order to do that, Go to your start window and then head into settings. In settings, go down to Windows Update. And in Windows Update, go to Advanced Options. Now in Advanced Options, if we go down to Delivery Optimization, and we've got the options here. So allow downloads from other devices. So again, this is a kind of bi-directional thing. You can also get updates from devices on your local network and also via the internet. So we definitely don't want to do that. If you do want to leave enabled, but you just want to get it from devices on your own local network, that's absolutely fine. You can check that box there. But if you want to remove it altogether or prevent it happening altogether, click on this one here to disable it entirely. Now, the next one is something which a lot of you are probably have disabled already, but let's go through the motions anyway for those that are watching with possibly new installed Windows operating systems. And we're going to get rid of Copilot. So this is easy to do. So click on Start. Again, go to Settings. This time we want to go to apps and then go to installed apps and just scroll down through the list and you'll probably find it somewhere around here if it's alphabetical. So we've got Copilot, easy to get rid of. Just click on the three dots there and choose uninstall. It says there this app and its related info will be uninstalled and just click on uninstall. And when it's gone, it will be removed from the list and you will no longer have the Copilot app on your PC although it still may be integrated in other applications such as things like Microsoft Edge or some of your Office and other Microsoft products. We've done a separate video on how to remove those. I'll leave that in the video description. So that's two of the easier ones removed. So let's now go through and look at number three. Number three is gonna be the Windows Search Indexing Service. So this is basically Windows Search. So if you click down here, Windows will basically all the time index your system to see where files are to make them quicker to respond when you're actually trying to access them. We don't really want that. And also it does use up additional CPU resources and also SSD reads and writes. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. In order to do that in the search bar, just type in services or start typing it. And you'll see the icon here. So click on services and we want to search for Windows search optimization. So scroll right the way down until you find Windows Search. Right click on it, choose Stop, then right click again, choose Properties, and the startup type will be automatic, so just set it to Disabled. When you're happy, click on Apply, and you should see after Windows Search is now being disabled. Number four is another one, which is a little bit of a, a weird one. So this is the remote desktop helper or the remote desktop indexing. So this is basically if you want to send a request out to somebody else on another computer to get help with your PC, you can use the remote desktop feature. And also it is a security vulnerability. So let's go ahead and remove that one. So find the service, which is called remote desktop services. Generally, it will be set to manual, so it will only activate when requested, or if you click on a malicious link, it could fire up. So let's get rid of it. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna actually go into properties, and currently it's set to manual. It's currently stopped anyway. If yours is started, click on stop, and we'll go to disabled. When you're happy, click on apply, and click okay, and that one's done. 
Now the next one we're going to do is actually one which is really beneficial, especially if you're using SSDs or solid state storage in your computer. There was an old remnant of Windows called SysMain, which basically was also known as Superfetch. And what it did is indexed files. So if you regularly use a program, it will try and load it into RAM just to make sure that it's ready for you when you click on it. Now with SSDs being as fast as they are these days, it's not necessary. And again, does tie up system resources such as RAM and also can increase reads on your SSDs, etc. So let's go ahead and find that one. And just look for the one which is called SysMain. At the moment it's automatic. So let's double click on that one. Look to see if it's started. Currently it's stopped. And all you need to do is set it to disabled. When you're happy again, click on apply and then OK. And now that service is also disabled. So that's five services we've got which are disabled on the system, which should improve performance and also reduce some of the CPU overhead. Again, with modern systems, you've generally got quite powerful CPU, so it isn't that much of a drain, but certainly all the extra bits are helpful and it will do mount up. Now for a kind of bonus, let's take a look at other things we can prevent from starting at Windows Startup to make your system feel a little bit more responsive and also prevent extra usage of RAM. In order to do that, go down to the search bar, type in startup and go to the startup apps. So this will be a list of all the programs which are starting when Windows starts. Now there isn't a right or a wrong way of doing this. You can have it as minimal as you like, or you can have things which are useful or convenient. So for me personally, things like the Elgato service, which I use for my capture cards and also for the Stream Deck, that's actually quite useful so I can leave that running. But things like the Epic Games Launcher, I rarely use that these days, so we can quite happily prevent that from running at startup. You can still use the program, you just have to click on the icon to get the program started. Also, you've got things like the MSI Center, so if you're on an MSI motherboard and you've got MSI Center, or you've got things such as Armory Crate or the Gigabyte Control Center, you may have a similar thing, so again, you can disable those should you want to. You can still run them, but you will have to manually click on the icons to get the program running. Again, look through and see which ones you want and which ones you don't. As you can see, the VMware tray process, I've disabled that, and also the Xbox service, that's cancelled as well. Things like the Windows security updates and other things like the audio, you probably want to leave those running. Again, the choice is yours. Ultimately, you can toggle these on and off and see how it affects your system performance. So there we go, there are some services and also some startup applications we can prevent from running on our Windows systems. This applies to basically pretty much all versions of Windows from Windows 7 up to the current Windows 11. So you should be able to follow on this even if you're not on the latest and greatest. And obviously if you've done a fresh installation, a lot of these services will be re-enabled as default. So it's always worth referring back to this video when you do a fresh install, just to see which things you can disable quite happily and improve your system performance overall. So anyway, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.